quite a process. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, policy 601, learning resources. I've oh, got that here somewhere. I'll turn that over to Superintendent Novak. Can you use your button there, Barry, please? Well, I have to say that um, writing policies is actually, uh, I quite like it. Wow. So it's, it's kind of like writing a paper. And you get to go back and redo it and rewrite it and um, make it better every time and edit it. So um, I feel uh, feel good about um, the the changes. And uh, so just to back it up a little bit, some background. Um, we brought this forward to the EPAC committee um, at its May eighth, or sorry, um, earlier in uh, earlier in the spring. It came to the board at. Uh, previous meeting and uh, the board provided some input and suggestions on some revisions. Um, initially it was one statement on the second paragraph that the board asked for uh, deletion and uh, inclusion of the of the statement around um, let me see let me find it. it's in the second paragraph Provide a balance on different points of view. So it was a green, it was a green statement. So what we've done is the black was the original print. Um, it's, it's certainly a lot easier just to read the cleaned up copy, but just to give background, the black print is the original. The red, what the red print is the actual um, work that the EPAC committee did. And then following the board meeting, the green is is uh, edits that um, I made following the listening to the board and following the, uh, some of the conversation and recommendations that the board had at the last meeting. So the first statement stays the same around the Board of Education valuing, providing a wide range of learning resources to meet the educational needs of all the students. The second paragraph, very similar to what it was, the board supports. Um, that in order to meet the needs of the students, it is the responsibility of the professional staff to select. There was a conversation at the meeting around um, materials being removed from collections, and so that was where I um, determined to add the deselect learning resources as well, because they, the, our staff does that. They don't just add resources, they actually deselect resources that are... Um, are no longer um, needed or, or outdate. And then providing a balance on differing points of view was, was uh, brought up from the uh, further statement and uh, made that statement then uh, redundant and so could be deleted. Uh, the third paragraph does, uh, we did try to reference some work um, around the new VC Ministry of Education and Learning Resources policy and in particular highlighted ERAC because ERAC is still um, a Ministry um, of BC Education listed resources um, that schools quite often will go to to find resources that they might be able to use to support some of the curriculum work. And so um, I, I felt that that strengthened the policy. And then you see at the bottom of the page, the cross-reference is listed around uh, the learning resources policy. And then um, the final statements around the board expects and recognizes that. There was a, there was a um, conversation around the board not just recognizing, but that there were expectations around this. And so um, I, there was wor some wording that was changed around uh, teacher librarians and other teachers using professional judgment skills and knowledge in selecting content. Um, Number two, school resources will reflect the Chilliwack School District policies pertaining to safe schools, inclusion, and respect, which was a conversation that um, happened as well at EPAC, um, that, that language. And it's actually students that brought up um, the, that wording. And then the third statement I thought was quite, was, is, is an addition that hadn't been there in the past, but I think it really does reflect the board's view around parents and guardians, partners in learning, um, encouraging to consult with school staff should they have questions about resources being used. I think that strengthens the policy um, and again gives permission 
for parents and guardians, even though they know sometimes know that, but it actually is explicit in stating that parents and guardians um, can go to the school and discuss resources with the classroom teacher if they have questions. And then, of course, all resources selected for use in school should meet the required learning standards for the course and grade. So that is the revised policy brought back um, to the board uh, for its consideration this evening. I am going to renew my uh, motion that I made at the last board meeting, and that is that the board uh, obtain a legal opinion on policy 601. Is that a motion? That's my motion. I will second it. All right. Do you want to speak to the motion, Trustee Moss? Yes. Uh, so. This is, for, there's two main reasons that I really think this board would be well advised in, in obtaining a, an official legal opinion on this policy. Um, number one, um, there was a Supreme Court case that went all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada and was successful, uh, and that was the Rick Moore case. And they, um, they successfully... Uh, one against the North Vancouver School District because the school district did not provide appropriate programming and resources for his dyslexic son. Now that went, as I said, all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. We at present don't have the resource programs that, uh, uh, that, that were to be provided uh, to his dyslexic son, and we don't have the resource programs here in Chilliwack um, for the same kind of thing. Um, the other reason is, uh, the second reason is because, of course, SOGI 123 resource, um, it's rife with potential actions. And it's, we already have, there's already four, and they're, they're, pro, they're both for and against. And I think, I just think that it, would be well advised of us to just take this to a lawyer and uh, have him vet it to make sure that uh, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Um, yes, I was about to make the motion, but we have a motion on the floor, so I'll pass. Yeah, we don't need to take this to a lawyer. Um, it's fairly straightforward. I think we could pass it the way it is. Um, I mean, neither reason for getting a lawyer to look at this makes sense to me. To say we need a lawyer to pass a learning resources material policy because we don't have certain resources in our schools doesn't make sense. Um, We've been over this policy now a few times. This, I mean, in all reality, our last policy was we followed the ministerial order to the letter. The person who brought this up is now arguing against it and like we need a lawyer to look at this. We do not. And this is all about SOGI 123. That's what this is about. All I got to say is that we have to move on past this policy and move on with our lives and move on with focusing on student achievement and not having these odd morality battles around this table. Um, well, I, I object to the wording of this policy. Number one, uh, librarians and other teachers will use professional judgment. I find that too subjective. Uh, what do you mean by professional judgment? Is it the same professional judgment that right. I... Trustee? Yes? We just, we're, we're, we've got a motion on the table. Are you, are you speaking to that motion? We haven't made, put a motion on the table. Oh, um, we've got about Trustee referring to a lawyer. So you're, you're speaking to I'm speaking to I'm speaking to the motion. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, Professional judgment is, is too vague of a term. And also, uh, it, it refers to as uh, parents are partners in learning. 
I don't think that would pass the legal definition. There was a court case with Hamilton Wentworth School Board in the Ontario Court of Appeal, and the judges all the, uh, were united in saying that parents have priority when it comes to deciding what the children should learn. So I think parents are more than partners. They're the final authority, and they delegate the teaching uh, instruction of children to the schools, but they have the final say. So I, I think there's some legal problems with this, the wording of this. As much as I like amateur lawyering and misstating uh, court cases, I think that we would be well advised to um, to vote against Trustee Ma's motion and move on to the policy. Any other comments or questions on the motion on the table? All right, I speak against the motion. I don't. I don't see the uh, the value in having legal advice on a learning uh, resource policy in our, our school district. I don't, don't agree with the evaluation, so I speak against it. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is defeated. We move on to the learning resource policy once again. Um, we need a motion on the table to discuss the, uh, the policy. Uh, I'll make the motion that the Board of Education approve policy 601 learning resources. Second by Trustee Patterson. Um, I think the changes, speaking to the, to the motion, I, I think the changes uh, that Superintendent Novak has made are, are uh, accurate and articulate and uh, make good sense. Uh, we've, as Trustee Coulter mentioned, we've had a policy in place prior to uh, the ministry directive, so we're just really updating. Uh, this to to give us peace of mind, I think. Uh, so I speak in favor of the motion. Yes, um, you made the motion I was about to make. So uh, Sorry. You, that's fine. I'm I'm in support of of uh, the policy. I think the revisions accurately uh, reflect the conversations and the detail around the language uh, that we had at the last meeting. And I, I think it's tidied up quite nicely. So uh, thank you. And uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, I support the motion. I, said, um, I support the uh, policy. I too want to speak in favor of the motion. Uh, certainly, um, the revisions captures the, the essence of what we talked about at our last meeting and identifying potential wordsmithing concerns. So. It's been addressed and actually has been added as far as extra components on there, which makes uh, this learning resources document or policy clear in my mind. So I want to speak in favor of the motion. I would like to um, point out that there's an error actually where um, it says boards may use resources that are recommended by the Ministry of Education. And I know you said the education resource acquisition is a recommendation, but it's actually not. The, um, the ministerial order actually states in it that the um, BC Ministry of Education no longer provides a recommended list of, um, of um, resources. Um, Another, another item that I would really like to see added is um, I would like to see some, some, uh, some expectations from the board um, such as, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll make an, an amendment if, if necessary, but um, uh, that as, as making a statement such as uh, the board uh, expects um, preference given to evidence-based and peer-reviewed resources. Um, that gives, that is demonstrating that the board is, is uh, asking for um, teachers to really vet their resources so that we can stay away from fads, which um, all too often get used and, you know, students in school have here and now to learn. They don't have time for us to realize, oops, that didn't work. And so, um, I wonder if that, um, if, if it is the will of the board that that statement be added. Um, I'll make the amendment. Um, 
Yeah. Are, so are you making this amendment and would like it seconded? Not yet. Okay. Um, i just like to point out that the language used about recommended resources in our new policy was pulled right from the policy that you just quoted. You just have to read farther down the page. It does talk about recommended resources and that boards may use those recommended resources. Yes, it does. I'm not blind. I've read it. Um, so I think we need to just pass this motion and pass this policy. I think it still goes to the spirit of what the Educational Policy Advisory Committee um, wanted. I also, even though our old policy followed the ministerial order that, like, that was there, this policy I like brings forward more that we are relying on our educational um, professionals to choose resources not on lay people and um, so I, I hope that we uh, pass this policy and I will vote in favor of it. Chair, thank you. Um, two th three things here if I may. <clears throat> Number one, um, I'm wondering and Evelyn, uh, our superintendent has done some great work on this and let me backtrack. I fully support uh, bullet number three or number three um, um, where we involve the, the parents uh, in, uh, partners in learning, the parents, the guardians. If there is a concern they need to, we wish for them to, uh, they are encouraged to consult with the, with the school staff. I think that is very, very important. I, so I really appreciate this. I'm wondering if, um, if we look at the, the second paragraph uh, and um, uh, where it says, um, select or deselect learning resources that support the curriculum. And then on the next line, we it talks about uh, consistent, with, consistent with the current curriculum. And I'm just wondering, uh, Superintendent, uh, uh, are we changing if I propose that we look at resources that support the current curriculum, provide a balance on differing points of view, etc. if that would we sort of have a have two curriculums, uh, one after the other. Um, do you see what I'm what I'm looking what I'm looking at? I'm just and I don't want to worry Smith here tonight, but I just that just glared at me yesterday. And uh, then I would like to. So, Superintendent, is there a is there a chance we can get that done? Are you would that be a, a friendly request? Secondly, I'm. It's not. Okay. Okay. I, all right. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, to amend the the motion, if I may, Chair. And uh, I would seek a seconder that we, that um, we add the word, res, uh, uh, under, within the 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 the, uh, the phrase, resources that support the current curriculum, provide a balance on differing points of view, um, and that we stroke out the with the current curriculum uh, but that and our consistence with the educational goals of the province the district and the school I think we have got we have two curriculums uh, within that same sentence then I would also within my amendment I would like to add the following phrase because I concur with um, that educational professionals need to um, need to be involved in selecting or deselecting curriculum and I would like to add the following phrase uh, within the sentence provide a balance of differing points of view comma support peer-reviewed scientific re educational research and are consistent with the educational goals of the province the district and the school so I'm as asking us to add current curriculum support the current curriculum delete the second current curriculum, and then add the support peer-reviewed scientific educational research. That would be my amendment if I would seek a seconder, please. Second. Anyone want to speak to the amendment? Oh. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. Oh. Uh, I think um, um, I think it's very, very important that we have a plan in place where professional staff are able to select and deselect materials 
based on what is currently the curriculum where there is a balance, uh, but even though there's a balance, and there's a balance on differing points of view, but of view, but also that there is peer-reviewed scientific educational research. So it's sound materials that I think uh, it, 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 that's a very, very important com component, and that, that I believe will assist our professional staff. Thank you. I speak against the motion. I would have been good with the current curriculum, but once you start talking about sound, um, scientific, uh, peer-reviewed uh, resources, um, it really depends on how you um, how you define define that, and it's also the language that um, anti-SOGI people are using lately. Um, so I would not like to see it in our policy. I think relying on the professional staff of the school district to choose resources is good enough. I'm sure they will um, pick good um, resources. There's a whole body of, of research, peer-reviewed, evidence-based, scientifically researched uh, methodology that uh, supports uh, kids learning to read, doing math, and this is just simply good practice. It also includes SOGI, but you know what? That's not a bad thing because we want to make sure we get it right with kids the first time. We don't want to be experimenting with them for any kinds of uh, programs or resources. So I think this is a good sound um, amendment. I'm having trouble with the amendment because my read of the second paragraph is different um, in terms of even to support the curriculum. Uh, and then provide a balance on the differing points of view. And then it goes on to say, and are consistent with the current curriculum, the educational goals of the province and the district and the school. That's listing, uh, that's a list that comes after that support the curriculum. So when it says the current curriculum, things do change, but I don't find that that is a, is a critical change at all. Um, the way I read it, it seems to be just fine. In terms of the peer reviewed, I think we're getting into a whole different area uh, and, and I uh, appreciate um, that that's what we want, but I don't see how it fits into this at this time. Yes, well, I, uh, I believe in evidence-based um, uh, programs for kids in schools. Uh, <coughs> I want to be sure that it will help kids, that will educate them, will keep them safe, uh, will keep them healthy. Um, I don't want to experiment on any of our kids, and I think it's really important that we have to be able to prove that the resources we use are backed up by scientific research and the most recent peer-reviewed research. I want to speak uh, against the amendment. I think uh, the original motion clearly outlines the direction that we've given superintendent and uh, speaks clearly, I think, to the direction that we want for this policy. I speak against the amendment as well. I, I think it reads just fine. I think if, uh, if you take the time to read it clearly, it makes sense. Uh, I think, you know, and I'm no educational expert. I'm no teacher. Um, but when we're talking about resources, uh, I think from my understanding, it's pretty important we understand we're talking about a vast array of, of things. It's, it's books in our libraries. It's so many different things. So when you start throwing around terms like peer-reviewed and scientific research and so on, I don't know if everything we have would even qualify. Um, but that's, that's just my perspective. But I speak against the amendment, and uh, I think we've all had a chance to speak to it. Uh, and we should vote on it. Trustee Moss, are you looking to say a few more things? All right, one more shot. So I'm going to propose one more amendment, and that is that we add a bullet point number five. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Folks, let's vote on the amendment, please. All in favor of the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Amendment fails. Okay, one more amendment, that we add bullet point number five, 
which says the board expects preference will be given to evidence-based and peer-reviewed resources. You know, to make light of, of peer review, that's teachers. That's teachers amongst themselves looking at methods that work for them in the classroom. To make light or to mock uh, evidence-based programs or to mock scientific evidence, <laughs> this is our job. Our job is to make sure that we are providing students with the very best we can give them. And that we're not just talking about SOGI. That's the hot button. But we're talking about we're talking about reading, we're talking about math, we're talking about science, we're talking about school for students. And like I said before, they have one shot at this. And if and if we miss because we use a program for two or three years and we think, oh, darn, it doesn't, it doesn't work. We'll have to change. That child has lost two or three years of their schooling. And that is no light or laughing matter. And so I, I, would, I would strongly encourage the board to give this policy some teeth and, and demonstrate that this board has an expectation that we are going to be using the very best resources and programs we can for the students of this school district. Um, I speak against this amendment for this very same reason I spoke against the last amendment. I don't care where you put it in the policy, if it's a, if it's a bullet point or not. Um, you know, it, it really depends on what, what your definition is. Is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? What's your definition of peer-reviewed research? I think we need to rely on our um, educational professionals. And like Paul said, we have got books in our schools that haven't been run through a scientific um, peer-reviewed journal, um, but are being used as learning resources and, are being, and because they work for our teachers. Um, I'm also not mocking peer-reviewed research i'm trying to shut the door on you know these anti-soji folks you let their foot in on this door next thing it's mindfulness next thing after it is look at their facebook pages we have to stop this nonsense and letting this language into our policy only continues the circus uh, yes i uh, speak against the motion um, on the basis that when you read the the policy. The board expects and recognizes that teacher librarians and other teachers will use professional judgment, skills and knowledge in selecting content for curriculum learning resources and recreational reading available to students in school library learning commons. All of that, there's a whole whack of that when we talk about reading available that is not peer-reviewed. Those are just reading resources. So to put peer-reviewed in restricts it to a particular part of the curriculum resources and not the full that we're trying to cover here in terms of learning resources in a broader sense. So I believe that that number one covers uh, the professional uh, uh, skills and judgment of our teachers and our teacher librarians and I think that is, is where we're at. If there's an issue, uh, the board will certainly be contacted and parents will be involved if they're concerned, as they have in the past, about anything that's being presented in our schools. So uh, I think it's perfectly fine and, and I can't see any need for change. Oh, yeah. I too want to speak against the amendment. I think if you look at paragraph two and outlining the uh, what's indicated there where staff are looking at learning resources to support the curriculum, provide balance to different points of view, consistent with current curriculum and the educational goals of the province, the district and the school. I think it's well covered there. 
Um, we want all the same thing. We want all our kids to be successful. We don't want any student to be left behind. And we're looking at a policy here which I think will allow uh, that direction to occur. And so I want to speak against the amendment and speak in favor of the original motion. All right. No further questions or comments, trustees? Uh, all those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Amendment fails. Back to the original policy, the motion on policy 601. I think we're ready to call the question on that. Trustee Mons, you have a final comment? Yeah, I do. So number three, parents, guardians are partners in learning and are encouraged. That should actually read have the right to consult with school staff should they have questions about resources being used. Not being encouraged because parents are are in fact the uh, clients of our education system. So I think that needs to be uh, stated a little more strongly. Would be would we be willing to do that or should I make an amendment? What do we think? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Okay. So I make an amendment that we change the wording from and are encouraged to have the right. Well, I think I've spoken to it pretty succinctly, and, uh, uh, yeah. And I would say it's more than they have, more than they are encouraged to discuss. I mean, they have a right to object and to withdraw. I think that's important to recognize as well, because parents have the final say in their children's education. Um, well, I'm going to vote against the amendment. Um, I mean, we're, I think encouraged is a strong enough word. Um, I mean, that that's enough. Um, is certainly as, as a strong supporter of parent involvement, um, parents have the right uh, but that right is not something that uh, we need to put in policy. They have the right, no question. I think the are encouraged is that parents, even though they have the right, uh, need to be encouraged to consult with school staff. I don't think they always feel that that's something that they, that they can do. So, um, sure, you want to put that in, fine. I don't know that it makes any great difference because uh, they have the right. There's no point in stating it all over the place, but if it makes folks comfortable that that's in there, um, the right cannot be removed from parents to be involved, whether we write it in policy or not. You cannot remove the rights. It's there whether you write it in or not. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, to speak in favor of the um, of the amendment. Um, we are we are um, partner. We have partners in learning. Parents are our partners, just like the Bulls of Hope are our partners. Um, and um, on the one hand, I want to believe that if you're a partner, there is a walking along beside the staff. We encouragement, I think, is a very, very appropriate word. Um, but if that, but if, if if encouragement is not strong, and if the word, if that word is not strong enough, um, if they just don't feel that they're able to do that, then I I have no difficulty in adding. Um, have the right. I have no difficulty in that because parents do have the right. Thank you. I think we're playing a game of semantics uh, here and certainly the word encourage means we want to support parents moving forward um, and which is more from a positive base. So it has nothing to do with rights. Uh, we know that they do have the rights. So this is basically uh, uh, our encouragement to them to to move forward in order to exercise that. So it's it's to me it's a stronger word, stronger 
uh, the way it's written as opposed to what is being recommended by the amendment. So. All right, let's uh, vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment. To read the amendment. Uh, can we read the amendment, please? To change and are encouraged in um, number three, to strike and are encouraged and substitute have the right to consult the school staff. All right, all those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Motion fails, amendment fails. All right, let's go back to policy 601. One more time, call the question. All in favor of approval of policy 601, learning resources? Opposed? All right, policy passes. 